on the street, in the water, or at the track. If you drive it, we can fuel it. It is tough to put into words what it means to be a sportsman NHRA drag racer and to one, represent your division of the NHRA, and two, to win as a JEGS All-Star. You know, when you can put your name on an event where the best of the best are racing each other, you know, from coast to coast, among ten, ten different sportsman classes, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a real stamp of approval for JEGS. It's, it's a great way for us to say thank you to our customers and uh, just have a good time, a good race. You know, it's, it's the most prestigious race that there is in sportsman racing to win, so uh, having our name tied to that is pretty cool. Right now, we have got Super Street on the starting line. That's Kevin McNichol in the right side for Division 2. That's Chris Thieves in the left side. Closing in down at the finish line stripe. Thieves, your Division 5 guy. This time it's a double breakout. They both go too quick. The target is 10.90. It's 10.877 to 10.874. Am I correct in understanding that this whole deal was your brainchild? Well, I, you know, we actually, we've sponsored it for a number of years. This is the uh, 36th anniversary of the race. TRW sponsored it originally, then Federal Mogul, then I think NHRA for a year, and then we picked it up. I think we've had it for almost almost 20 years. Kind of nickel now. He is trying to go back to back. He won it all when we were here a year ago, and Alan Firestone. Allen's out of Oklahoma. He's part of that elite motorsports team. As a matter of fact, they're the ones that bolted the motor together that's in that car. Six second bracket racing. All right, you know, we talk about six second races. We're dialed at a 627 and getting chased with a 656. It is truly amazing here what these cars do in Top Sportsman. Traction time there, 14 for Firestone. And Dinkle gets all kinds of squirrely dials, 24, not enough to run him down. He lost some ET there, trying to chase. Look at he's dead five for the loss, and look at that, 656 one with a 14 reaction time. That is how you get it done in top sports. And what a run for Ellen Firestone. Pulling, I got to say, we want everybody to win here, but I'm a D5 guy. You're a D7 guy, right? I'll let you know. Great start there, 19 double 06. Both these drivers on their game right here. And the win, well, didn't go D5's way. This program is very personal to me, to the Coughlin family, to our associates at JEGS. Um, simply, you know, we don't just slap our name on stuff. Um, this is an event that, that our four owners, our second generation owners, have all raced in. Uh, now we've had two, two, uh, two third generation drivers race in it, so there's a lot of pride in that. Um, but really, you know, Every year we just kind of, we use the racer's input to make the make the event better and better, you know. And I, I try and ask all the competitors, what are three things that you wouldn't want to see change? And what are three things that you would like to see change? And that's really, with their input, that's how we've kind of been able to tweak the program through all these years. You know, I, I really just try and pick three things to improve on each year. Um, you know, last couple years we've added uh, contingency. Contingency uh, used to not be part of the all-star race. We added that. You know, I think top sportsman, top dragster, adding them a number of years ago, um, as well as having them race in the event. You know, there was a period of time when they only raced in the all-star race and they weren't a part of the national event that the all-star race was at. And, uh, you know, it's hard to ask somebody from Division Six or Division Seven to tow across the country and get a couple time laps and one run, you know, so, um, you know, there is a great deal of pride in it, you know, I mean, I, we want everything to be the best that it can be for the racers, for just the overall experience for the fans. Well, the All-Stars, to me, you know, it's a prestigious thing just to qualify for this, because they just take seven qualifiers, one from each division, and then you have the blocker from last year, so it's a real prestigious thing just to qualify for. And if you're lucky enough to win it, that's icing on the cake. 
We've got Super Comp rolling into the beams right now. The next final round, Trevor Larson. That's another one of your guys. Christopher Dodd, he's not one of mine, so you can go ahead and have this one. <laughs> These two have been, Christopher Dodd has been hot as of late. He has won just about everything he has come to. And, you know, same thing is said about Trevor Larson. When the guy gets on a run, he's hard to beat. So a great matchup here and a bit of a staging duel in the final of Super Comp. Larson's in. Dodd taking his time. What is it about Super Comp and staging duels? We've seen that three or four times through the course of the week. Hey, check this out. Anybody out there bracket race? A 001 reaction time just got left on. That is, what did I, look at that, 890 with a 9, 001 on the tree. Christopher Dodd takes a little bit too much stripe right there, breaks out with an 887.3. That is a phenomenal drag race. When the final round reaction times are 001 to trip, zip, perfect, you got to make the right choice of the stripe. Vern Rowland out of Oklahoma in the left side. Vern brought two cars here to the All-Stars. He made this one into the final. And in the right side, Jeremy Mason, the reigning champion of the world, the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series. Jeremy, I'm telling you, first round, he had a former champ. Second round, he had a former champ. Well, he doesn't have a former champ in Vern Rowland, but he's got a guy that's won a whole lot of races down in Division Four. Well, when you come to the All-Stars, you are not duck hunting. If you're looking for ducks, you are in the wrong pond, because these guys here are all serious. You've seen the numbers people are putting up. Double O here, 3,000 uh, margin of victory. It is cutthroat here, no matter what number's on the side of your car. And red lights start, minus 20 for Vern Rowland. And Jerry Mason, your reigning world champion, is 14 on the tree, and he's got a free run down to celebrate his All-Stars victory. And that is another great thing to add to your resume and another great trophy to put up on your shelf. You know, when you're talking about the big things you want to win, Jags All-Stars is right up there. The Jags All-Stars was important enough to bring you out of retirement. Yeah, absolutely. The Jags All-Star brought me out of retirement. So. What do you think of this program? Oh, it's a great program. I mean, you know, opportunity for a lot of guys to come out and, you know, show their talents and, you know, get a double money kind of deal, you know, get the two races in one. It's just a great deal. What would it mean to you to win this thing? Well, I don't know. I ain't never won it, but it's one of my, one of the bucket list things. You know, everybody got a bucket list, they say, and never been able. I've been runner up one of them, but It'd be great to win it, but if I don't, that's just part of life. Zero one second head start for David Ramsey. What does it say about the program when an uh, iconic drag racer such as David Ramsey comes out of retirement just to race it? Well, you know, when you have legends like David Rampey speaking highly of this program, um, wow, you, you really couldn't ask for a better stamp of approval. Um, I'm amazed he's never won the thing. I'm, I'm blown away by that because um, he's been in it a number of times. That uh, just shows that if you can get somebody to come off the couch and come to an NHRA race, they still got something to check off their bucket list. That's that's pretty cool. All right, now it is time for Superstar. Kyle Rizzoli, the West Coast hitter, taking on Mike Crutchfield, the guy out of D2. Crutchfield out of Montgomery, Alabama, where he is in the race tire business. Kyle Rizzoli actually works with his dad. They run a high-end automotive service out there. If you're out in St. Louis Obispo, up into that area, the central coast is its own in California. And, of course, Kyle's dad, a former all-star, when he was racing alcohol cars back in the day. He's got the lineage, that is for sure. He's got his pre-stage bulb on. We'll see Mike Crutchfield. They're both in. Do we have another burn down? Handicap head start comes into play here. Rizzoli is going to leave first by almost one full bulb. 0 0.045 seconds. Breakout rules in effect. 25 for Rizzoli, 11 behind for Crutchfield. And here's the story. So it plays out here in the last 13, 320 feet. Rizzoli drops, and he gets the win. He makes the right call down there. Do you see the nose of that car just falls off? He goes 947 on his 945, and Crutchfield gets there but goes a little too quick, an 898 on the 9 flat. When you're doing breakout racing, for those of you casual fans or those of you that just come out to watch the Nitro cars, hey, we appreciate you. We love each and every one of you. All right, Slate Cummings. He is D4 against Tyler Wadarzik, D5 guy. Now, Slate's a good buddy of mine. Tyler's a team, or a former teammate of mine, so I really shouldn't pick a side here right now. And, you know, these two guys are really on kill. Oh, pick a side. Pick a side. Oh, Tyler just goes through it, hands it to Slate Cummings, the Bayou boy with the wheels up launch, 30 on the tree, and he's got a free run to celebrate. And trust me, Slate and the boys know how to celebrate. Fist pumps in the air for the Team Mosier team. 
and these guys are going to party hard tonight. I know it's tomorrow, there's another <laughs> day of racing, but trust me, you want to go down to that pit tonight because that's where all the action is going to be. Our competition eliminator, this is my category. you got Craig Bourgeois versus the champ. Well, Craig, a former champ, but the current champ, Frankie Aragona. And now, here's the deal is Frankie's had to use a lot of index to get here. Craig Bourgeois has basically got a free ride, but you know what? Anything can happen, and right now it's Craig's to lose. You know, i got to believe Frank Aragona, if they had anything left in that car, they tried to crank it up. You remember it kind of got a little bit sideways on you down there when he made the last run. I really believe they kind of tried to turn the power up and see what they had to do to get away with it. He just went in and double bulbed. I'm sure that was a mistake. They backed him out. Courtesy stage in effect. They're in. Their stage, they're ready, and Frankie goes red. He knew he needed it all. He missed the tree by four thousandths of a second. Bourgeois wasn't going to give him a whole lot of room down there. He was 002, and Craig Bourgeois won the All-Stars and stayed clean through the final round. That's pretty impressive stuff. When you get to see a first first time winner win this event, it's uh it's it's pretty special. You know, you really kind of key in on their family members in the winner's circle and you know, whether it's somebody's child that won and the mom and dad are just elated and their family's elated and, and uh, you know, a lot of times we've had, you know, second or third generations win this race and their, their father and their grandfather's won. That's, that's pretty cool to have, have an event like that kind of tied to somebody's personal legacy or, or um, you know, their their bucket lists, their their achievements, their however you want to phrase it. Um, but really, like you know, after the first round, I always I always greet everybody out of their car, and I always go to the guy that lost, guy or girl that lost first, tell them to get their ass back in it next year. It's good to see him. Thanks for all the support. Um, you know, and I kind of do that all the way until the finals and. Um, you know, the, the, some of the things that are very special that stick out are, you know, when you, you get somebody that wins, they come around the, the corner up there at the top end, and, you know, we're scrambling to make sure that when they get out of the car, they've got a trophy with their name on it. So every, all the names are all printed out ahead of time, as well as a check with their name on it. And, uh, you know, to have guys and girls get out of the car and just like, oh, my gosh, I won this. This is awesome, and it's got my name on it, you know. And, you know, you just a lot of those little attention to details that we've brought to the program, I think, has really, really helped the program exceed to where it is today and where it will be tomorrow. Move now to the starting line. It is the final round of Top Alcohol Dragster. You gotta love this now. We got Jackie Frick from New Jersey on the left side of the racetrack, the John Fink Tune Machine. Fink Equipment Accelerated Travel and the TechNet Dragster of Josh Hart out of Florida. Josh Hart is a great racer at this event. Tell me why I have to love that. There's two great cars, both injected on nearly 100% loaded nitromethane. Not, not says, loving that is un-American. One of them is red, white, and blue. That's says, why you got to love it. Says the guy who lives in the eastern region where both of these are representatives. You live in a place that Gila monsters and cactuses exist. I don't like either of those things. I mean, you probably sympathize with the Gila monster a lot, but I can tell you this. I never have to shovel heat out of my driveway. <laughs> so Jackie Frick's car being waved in by Taylor Iacono, and on the right side it is, of course, Josh Hart. One of the key things I think in this race is going to be simply who steps on the gas first. Because the way these cars move, you're not revving it up, you're not dropping in the clutch. You use a centrifugal clutch. In the semi-final round, they both went 5.20 seconds. You better hit the gas on time if you want to go home an all-star. The move goes to Josh Hart, a telepathic 031 reaction time, but it's Jackie Frick at the top end of the racetrack. 529.9, 266 miles an hour, and pandemonium ensues on the starting line. Congratulations to Jackie Frick. Josh Hart went 5406 at 266. Jackie was second off the starting line, but boy, she was first to the strike. Yeah, Josh's car really fell off out there in the middle of the racetrack. The eighth mile speed down, and just remember, they both have to race tomorrow as well. Oh, I'm sure they're thinking a lot about that right now. All right, they have fired up Ray Drew's car. He was waiting and waiting and waiting, trying to be as good a sport as possible. And they finally told Ray, start the car or take it home. He was forced to fire up, and he did. Now look at Ray again. You want to talk about a good sport. 
He did a burnout almost to the eighth mile. He has given Pomponio every opportunity. Dan's car now does come to life back here. They bring the body down. He will do a much shorter burnout because I guarantee you, Pomponio appreciates what Ray is doing and he's not going to hang him out by doing a long burnout. But now we look at our starting line. Both cars, burnouts complete, the alcohol funny car final. A big moment in any one of these two guys' career. Both of them have won a pile of races over the course of their lifetimes, whether we're talking national events, regional championships, they've both done it. But to be a Jags All-Star is a small group of people. You are right about that, and only one of these is going to get to join that. Now, Pomponio, out of New Jersey. I don't think I even need a calculator to know that the Eastern Region is going to win the championship here. They had both dragsters in the final. They got a funny car in the final. And no matter how I count them up on my fingers, I can't get enough points for anybody else to overcome that. That's a pretty good race. There may have been pressure in the pits for Dan Pomponio. It didn't show in the starting line, but ultimately it's Ray Drew outpowering him. 550, 265 miles an hour. Congratulations to Ray Drew of Hales Corners, Wisconsin for the win in alcohol. Funny car, Pomponio, 559, one at 259. And on the flip side of this one, Ray Drew failed to qualify for the actual Eliminator this weekend. They are the winner, of course, of the Jags All-Stars in 2020. They had the highest points total, 1,300 points earned by Division 5. Congratulations to that team. Division 4, 1,100 points. Took them right down to the mat. Division 2 earned 800 points. Division 7 earned 700 points. Division 1 earned 400 points. Division 6 earned 300 points. And Division 3 is still trying to find the drag strip. Division 3 is confused as to where the race was happening today. Just a tough day. The Jags All-Star Regional standings, it was the East Region that cleaned house with 800 points. North Central, a distant second with 300 points. Central at 200. And Allen's now home, Allen the West Division, down. or region, I should say, 100 points. My, my job is, uh, you know, officially it's director of media and motorsports for Jags, but, you know, I'm also the eyes and ears for the family, for the business, and, and uh, my job, you know, really is to paint the world yellow and black. My, you know, my goal is to... You know, make sure our 800 number is so busy that people get busy signals and that the internet, the jegs.com website crashes because we got so many people visiting it, you know, but uh, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Coming here to Indy, I mean, I'm going to have to really pry my hands off of this track to uh, to get me convinced that it needs to go back to Chicago next year.